NKVD, Stalin's secret police, ripping away rights responsible for atrocities. The setting is Russia, following World War I in 1919, when Vladimir Lenin came to power as the first leader of the Bolshevik Party and the first head of Russia. He was a ruthless leader determined to keep his position at all costs. One of his most infamous misuse of power was the Red Terror, an act of war forged on his own countrymen. Lenin executed this bloodbath through the Cheka, a secret police force formed by him to do his bidding. The Russian people knew any opposition to Lenin or his Cheka police would not be tolerated. One man in particular noticed the fear and power Lenin obtained. This man was Joseph Stalin. Stalin strived to one day achieve the vast power Lenin had. To do this, Stalin created a plan. He would move up the Russian party ladder, take control of the Communist Party, and appoint himself Tsar of Russia. By the time Lenin died in 1924, Stalin had become the Tsar of Russia. Like Lenin's Cheka, Stalin too needed a secret police. His dream would be the NKVD, People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs. Beginning in 1934, Stalin installed the foundation of the NKVD, using them as a secret police which controlled all parts of Russia's internal and state security. Two years later, around 1936, Stalin began to worry about losing his power and position because of the world's reaction to his policies that he was implementing in Russia. He would do anything to maintain his power. Stalin's answer was to use his newly reformed NKVD to purge Russia of any anti-Soviet elements. Stalin's first and greatest purge became known as the Great Terror. The goal of the Great Terror was to sweep away all of Stalin's dissenters, starting with the founding fathers of Bolshevism. Stalin then had them executed using the NKVD. This two-year purge would result in over 1.5 million people being executed, put on trial, or sent to the Gulag. The Gulag was the NKVD's torture camp, and its leader was Nikolai Yezov. If sent to the Gulag, you had no rights and was forced to do labor. The NKVD was responsible for fabricating plots about terrorist groups and then sending the people caught to concentration camps all across Russia. Even with the threat of war looming overhead, Stalin continued with the Great Terror, purging the entire leadership of the Ukrainian government. With nowhere to hide, the Prime Minister of Ukraine committed suicide, knowing he was next in the Great NKVD purge. Through this, the entire Central Committee of the Ukraine government perished. An estimated 37% or 70,000 people of the Ukraine Communist Party were brutally killed. Afterwards, Stalin stated, Ukraine's party has been purged spotless. All this death and loss of rights from one man and his secret police. The NKVD's terror continued to spread throughout Russia. When people tried to rise up against their power and declare their rights, they were cut down quickly. There was no stopping the NKVD. You either joined them or died disobeying them. The NKVD's reach even extended into the Soviet Union's Red Army and its soldiers' rights. The NKVD was responsible for keeping the troops under control. The NKVD was in complete control of the Red Army. In battles, the NKVD would stand behind the front lines and were told to shoot anyone who tried to retreat, keeping the Red Army's soldiers loyal using any means necessary that was the NKVD's responsibility. Unbelievably, through Stalin's reign of terror, there are people who admired and loved the power Stalin garnered. They went so far as to call him Uncle Stalin. They thought Stalin's power in Russia was protected. Perhaps instead of watching for invaders, these same Soviets should have been watching out for Stalin and his NKVD, an enemy of rights within their own country. For instance, during Stalin's reign, he sometimes would make reckless decisions, which would later impact the whole country. One of these bold decisions would be later referred to as the Katyn Massacre. It began on April 13, 1940, when Germany announced the discovery of mass graves near Smolensk, Russia. They discovered the bodies of 4,400 men whose hands had been tied and were shot from behind. The victims were missing Polish officers who had been taken captive and were meant for an exchange between the Soviets and the Germans. Somehow, along the way though, the bodies had gone missing without a trace. Hitler suspected foul play. 
In December 1941, Hitler interrogated Stalin and his officials to try to find out the truth. Previously, Stalin had stated that the corpses which were discovered were only runaways. Two years later, Stalin's lie would be proven when the Red Cross found evidence that Russia was indeed guilty of killing the Polish officers. When news reached the world that Stalin and the NKVD were responsible for the murders, Stalin immediately took action. He blocked off the Katyn Forest near Smolensk and brilliantly covered up his actions. With the orders from Stalin and the NKVD, Officers dug up the graves, which the Germans had discovered, and forged documents on the bodies. Stalin and his NKVD did not stop there. They then threatened witnesses of the Katyn massacre to keep quiet. In 1943, when the Katyn residents finally had enough courage, they went and told the officials what had really happened. Because of this, Stalin had to confess to his crime. Eventually, in 1990, the NKVD was confirmed to be responsible for the mass killings. In the end, this incident earned the name the Katyn Massacre. The NKVD's impact was felt even in America. It all started when British spies told the Soviets about the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was created by the United States as a secret project concerning the creation of atomic bomb. The Soviets wanted to infiltrate the project and find out the secrets. This is where the NKVD enters the picture. This secret police recruited Julius Rosenberg in hopes to retain secrets from Mother Russia regarding the atomic bomb. Along with his wife, Julius, he was accused of selling information and spying on America and selling it back to Russia. On June 19, 1953, they were executed in Sing Sing prison. Knowing what the fallout would be, the NKVD sacrificed the Rosenbergs and remained silent since this would help Russia and Stalin's reputation in the world. NKVD responsibility of coercion would extend into Eastern Europe. The NKVD worked during the Cold War in Eastern Europe to squash resistance, deny rights, and keep the communist philosophy strong. With the help of the NKVD, Russia forged a military alliance between the communist parties of Albania, Romania, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and East Germany. March 5, 1953 marked the end of Stalin's reign when he passed away from a stroke. With Stalin dead, the NKVD would morph into another secret police. One year later, the KGB, Committee for State Security, was created. The KGB was a replica of the NKVD and kept everyone in fear and exerted complete control over Russia. For over 35 years, the KGB took away the rights of its police and was responsible for this terror until 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. In conclusion, most police in this world bring justice and peace. Sadly, the NKVD was not a part of this category. They not only took away rights through intimidation, but also took away the security people should have in police.